Um, welcome to Seven C's rendition of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, yes. have been working um, since September on memorizing their lines and their choreography and their solos. Um, as I'm sure that you know, probably many a night memorizing lines, going back and forth. Shakespeare is a big deal. Memorizing those lines can be difficult and they've really taken it in stride. Um, they also have written narrations that go between each scene because this is a, a shorter version of Midsummer, but they wrote the narrations to sort of fill in the blanks, fill in the gaps where they aren't performing on stage. Um, I'm so excited for you to see their performance. They are really excited. They are such a cohesive ensemble of girls and they've had such a fun time um, pulling this together for you. So without further ado, this is Seven C's rendition of A Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> parts of my friends. Wait, 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 wait. I'm talking to morals. That's disgusting. Anyway, <laughs> first allow me to introduce myself as the king of the fairies, Oberon. I must be honest when I tell you that the characters in this scene are mostly egocentric males set in the late 1500s in the 16th century. <laughs> Ew. Hermia, our female protagonist in the play, is simply trying to marry her boyfriend Lysander, but her controlling father, Aegeus, claims that she is his property. Don't worry, it's as one did in the 15th century. And he forces her onto Demetrius, another boy in the play, who had previous complicated love relations with another girl, Helena, um, her best, Hermia's best friend. Um, I forgot to mention one last thing. He uh, left Helena to go pursue Hermia, so he's such a nice man. I mean, going some, to leave someone to pursue your best friend. Ugh, gross. No. Ugh. But at the same time, that is happening. The Duke of Athens, Theseus, is getting into an arranged marriage with the Queen of the Amazons, Hippolyta, to stop him from waging war. He's also extremely egocentric and puts himself in situations that he has no place in. Sound familiar? Well, that's mainly it. Wait, I forgot to mention one last important detail. This is all staged, and they're all acting, and nobody's going to get hurt. Well, bye now, mortals. <laughs> Now, fair Hippolyta, I know to our jaws on pace. Four happy days bring in memory, but only things how slow this old moon wanes. Four happy days will quickly steep themselves into night. Four nights will quickly dream away at the time. And then the moon, new bent in heaven, now like a silver bow, shall behold the night of our solemnities. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword, and love doing thine injuries, but I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with revelation. Happy Theseus, sorry now too. Thanks, Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius, my noble lord. This man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. <laughs> <laughs> this man hath bewitched the blossom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. I do entreat your grace to pardon me, but I beseech your grace that I know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure to the forever society of men. Now, fair Hermia, question your youth, know well of your blood, examine well your choices. Either you yield not your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun. For let sweet Hermia and Lysander yield thy crazy title to my certain right. You have your father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Scorn for Lysander, true. He hath my love, and what is mine, my love shall render unto him, and she is mine, and I do stay unto Demetrius. I am my lord as well derived as he, as well possessed my love is more than his. My fortune is ever as fairly ranked, if not with vengeance as Demetrius. And what is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauty as Hermia. Why shall I not then prosecute my right? Demetrius, all that to do his head, made love to Nader's daughter Helena, and she won her soul, and she sweet lady goes upon the spotted and inconstant man. Come, Demetrius, and come, Aegis. I have some cracks going for the both of you. With duty and desire, we follow you. How now, my love? 
Why are cheeks so pale? Hot chairs the roses do fade so fast. Be light for want of rain, which I could well, but team them from the tempest of my eyes. I, me, for all could I, that I could ever read, could ever hear by Taylor history, the course of true love never did run smooth. If the course of true lovers ever were crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Look, here comes Helen. God speed, fair Helen, over wither away. You call you me fair? That fair I cannot say. Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair. Teach you what art you sway the motion of Demetrius's heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. What your frowns would teach my smiles such skill. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. No, but your beauty, would that fault were mine? Take comfort. He no longer shall see my face. Lysander and I will fly this place. Helena, a deal is as you want him to meet you as dead on me. How happy your son can be. I will go tell Demetrius that fair Hermes flight, and then will he tomorrow night in the wood pursue her. disaster. Oh, it's time for me to leave. Goodbye. <laughs> You can duck yourself wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors, say with the pictures on, then read the names of the actors, and so go to a point. Mary. Our play is the most lamentable comedy, and the most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and to Mary. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the school. Masters, spread yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Answer as I call you, Nick Bottom, the weaver. Ready? Name what part I'm for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? 
a lover, that gives himself the most gallant of love. That will last some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I'll move storms, I'll condone the measure. Francis flute the bells mender. Here, Peter Grimms. You must take this be on you. What is this be? A wandering day? A beauteous lady that Grimms must love. Nay, faith, let me not go on I have a beer coming. That is all one. May play no mask and speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Let me play this be too. I'll speak a monstrous low voice. Disney, Disney. I'm Pyramus, my lover dear, and I disc a dear and lead a dear. No, no. You must play Pyramus, and I flute this be. Proceed. Robin Sarvin the tailor. You, Peter Quince. Miss Floyd Pyramus's mother. Tom Stop the Tinkerer. Here, Peter Quince. You, Thisby's mother. Myself, Pyramus's father. So now the joint the lines part, and I hope this is a play well fitted. How you lines part written, pray you, if it be, give it me, for I am slow study. You may do an extent, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the line too. I will roar that I will make any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the Duke say, let him roar again, let him roar again. And you should do it too terribly. If by the Duchess and the ladies that they would shriek, and that would have to hang us both. That, that would, would hang us every mother's son. You must be play Pyramus. I will undertake it. Pray to us, where we rehearse. Meet me at the palace wood. I pray you fail me not. There we may rehearse, most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect. Adieu. At the Duke's oak we meet. Enough, hold a cup of shakes. Huzzah! Hi, it's Quince, one of the best directors there is. In our next scene, you'll see the night wanderer Puck, bigger than Titania's fairies. Then the proud fairy queen Titania and the jealous fairy king Oberon enter the stage. Though these titles aren't true, the fairy queen and king are fighting over a changing child. After their large amounts of bickering, Puck and Oberon devise a plan to put a spell on the fairy queen. While this happens, Demetrius and Helena wander up and meet where Puck and Oberon are. They overhear Helena confessing her love, while Demetrius sadly denying her love. After they leave, Oberon and Puck decide to put the spell on Titania and the Athenian couple they just saw. But the spell doesn't come out as planned. Oh no, I said too much. Enjoy the play while it lasts. <laughs> Whither wander you? Over hill, over dale, throw a brush, throw a briar. Over park, over pale, throw a flood, throw a fire. I do wander everywhere, and I serve the fairy queen to do her orbs upon the green. <laughs> the cowslips tall, her pastures be, and those gold coats spot to see. Those be rubies, fairy favors, and their freckles of their sabers. I must go seek some dewdrops here, and hang a pearl on every cowslip's ear. Farewell, the law of spirits, I'll be gone. Our queen and all our elves come here none. The king doth keep his revels here at night. Take heed, the queen could not within his sight. Either I mistake your shape in making clay, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow. Are you not he that frightens the maiden to the villagery, skim milk, and sometimes labors a quern, and bootless makes breathless housewife turn, and sometimes make the drink to bear no barm, mislead night wanderers <laughs> laughing at their harm? Those that hog on the call you, and sweet puck, you do their work and they shall have good luck. Are you not he? Thou speakest to right, I am that merry wanderer of the night, but room fairies, here comes Oberon. Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania! What? Jealous, Oberon? Terry Rush Mountain, and honor thy lord! Then I must be thy lady. Why should Titania cause her own brawn? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order, but her being mortal of that boy did die. And for her sake, I will not part with him. How long within this wooden tent you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. Hmm. Give me that boy and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom, fairies. Away, we shall try downright if I longer stay. <laughs> well, go thy way, thou shalt not from this girl until I torment thee for this injury. <laughs> My gentle puck, come hither. Fetch me the herb, the flower I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids lay will make man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. I put her around about the earth in forty minutes. Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania when she's asleep, and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing that she waking looks upon, be it on lion, bear, on wolf or bull, on meddling monkey or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. <coughs> but who comes here? I'm invisible, and I'm over in their conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? 
Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, in plainest truth, tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you. And even for that, do I love you the more? And I'm sick when I do look on thee. And I'm sick when I look not on thee. You do impeach your modesty too much. I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes and leave you to the mercy of the wild beast. I'll follow thee and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. <laughs> Fare thee well, nymph, ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, there it is. I pray thee, give it me. With the juice of this, I'll shriek Titania's eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it, and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. <laughs> For my sake, my dear, lie further off yet. Do not lie so near. So far be distant. Good night, sweet friend. Thy love ne'er alter till thy sweet life end. Amen, amen, to fair prayer say I, and to end life when I am to loyalty. Here's my bed, sleep is give thee all his rest. With half that wish, the wishes as be pressed. Through the forest I have gone, but Athenian found I none. Night in silence, who is here? Weeds of Athens he doth wear. This is he, my master said, despise the Athenian maid. And hear the maiden sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. Churl upon thy eyes I throw with all the power this charm doth owe. Stay thou kill me, sweet to me! 
Demetrius! I charge thee hence and do not haunt me thus. Oh, but the darkling leave me, do not so! Stay on thy peril. I alone will go. <laughs> but who is here? Lysander? On the ground? Dead? Or asleep? I see no blood. No wound. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake! And run through fire, wolf for thy sweet sake. Transparent, Helena! Say not so, Lysander. Hermia still loves you, then can be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent. The tedious minutes I with wrath spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who will not change a raven for a dove? Wherefore did I deserve scorn? Wherefore was I to this key mock reborn? It's not enough, it's not enough, young man. They did not, no, never could deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eye. But you must flout my insufficiency? She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleepest thou there, and never mightest thou come Lysander near. And all my power I do just my love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. Help me, Lysander, help me! Do thy best to pluck this crown tripping from my chest. Lysander? What removed? Lysander! Lord! Gone no word, no sound, no? Then I'll perceive you all not nigh. Either death or you I'll find immediately. <laughs> While the mechanicals were rehearsing, Oberon laid the magic in Titania's eyes while she was asleep. What thou seest when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love's sake. Wake when some vile thing is near. During the rehearsal, Puck turned Bottom into a donkey. <laughs> Surprisingly, it made him look more attractive. <laughs> Titania, of course, woke up, saw Bottom, and is now in love with a donkey. <laughs> what angel wakes me from my flowery bed? I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. I love thee. She thinks, mistress, you should have a little reason for that. Fairies, <laughs> come. Wait upon him and lead him to my bower. Yes, yep. good queen. Meanwhile, Puck realizes he put the magic in the wrong person, making Lysander fall in love with Helena. Oberon is furious and wants him to fix it. My mistress, the monster is in love. This falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou yet latched the Athenian eyes as I bid thee do? I took him sleeping. That I finished too. Stand close, to the same Athenian. This is the woman, but this not the man. What? <laughs> Ah! Oh, why rebuke him that loves you so? I am not guilty of Lysander's blood. I pray thee then, tell me that he's well. And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege of never to see me more. Puck wants to fix things, but in doing so, he puts the potion on Demetrius. Now both men have fallen out of love with Hermia and into love with Helena. Hermia feels betrayed by her boyfriend Lysander. Helena thinks that Demetrius, Lysander, and Hermia have all joined forces to make fun of her. Why should you think I wouldn't scorn? These vows are Hermia's. Will you give her or? He loves her. He loves not you. Oh, Helen, goddess. Oh, spite. I say you all are bent to set against me for your merry men. You are both rivals and love Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena. What love could press Lysander from my side? Fair Helena, why seekest thou me? You speak not as you think it cannot be. Lo, well, she is one of this confederacy. Now I see they have conjoined all three. The fashion this false sport in spite of me. Helena, I love thee, but my life I do. I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. <laughs> Finally, Puck figures out a plan to set things right. He leads the four young lovers to be lost in the woods until they each decide to rest until daylight. Once asleep, Puck removes the curse from Lysander, so he'll go back to loving Hermia. Still under the spell, Demetrius loves Helena and gives up pursuing Hermia. The four young lovers are, cap are happy couples once more. And everything is right in Athens. <laughs> I can't believe that I, Francis, would have to play a woman and make fun of myself. I mean, 
Bond would be absolutely perfect for the role. He doesn't care about how ridiculous or embarrassing he looks. Anyway, I'm here to introduce some interesting scene folks. We have Miss F Queen of Fairies, Titania, who's in love with Bottom. <laughs> Moving on. Please <laughs> Blossom and Moth are constantly making fun of him. I mean, imagine being him. King Oberon is deciding whether or not to release the fairy queen. <laughs> Sit thy down upon thine flowery bed, why thy amiable cheeks do coy, and stick musk roses in thy sleek smooth head, and kiss thy fair large ears, my gentle daughter. Where's Peas Blossom and Moth? Ready. Scratch his head, Peas Blossom. <laughs> What's your will? What thou desirest to eat? What wilt thou hear some music around when the fairy song can be made? <laughs> He thinks he has a great desire to a bottle of hay. I can seek out the squirrel's board and fetch the off new nuts. <laughs> he would rather have a handful or two of dried peas. I pray you let none of Titania's people stir him. Sleep comes upon him. Sleep now, and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies, be gone, and be always away. <laughs> yes, yes, good, good queen. queen. <laughs> oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity. I did upbraid her and fall out with her. For she is airy temples that are founded with cornet of fresh and fragrant flowers. I then did ask for her change of child, which straight she gave me. I will release the fairy queen. My Oberon, what visions have I seen? Me thought I was enamored of an ass. And there lies your love. How came these things to pass? Oh, how mine eyes do loathe his visage now. Silence a while. Robin, take off this head. Titanium is a construct more dead than common sleep of all these five cents. <laughs> now when thou wakest with thine own fool's eyes peep, fairy king, attend and mark. I do hear the morning lark. Come, my lord, and in our flight, tell me how it came this night that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. about the mechanicals though. They're horrible actors. <laughs> I think Theseus had it out for him when he decided to hire the mechanicals, but making fun of them will be the highlight of the wedding. The real highlight though is seeing my Hermia and finally getting to marry the girl of my dreams. 
And I guess it's nice that Helena and Demetrius will be married as well. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> In the end, everything works out, and now I get to live the dream of being with my beauteous Hermia. And now the play. Adieu. <laughs> It is strange, Dithesius, that these lovers speak of. More strange than true. I may never believe these antique fables nor these fairy toys. But all the stories of the night told over, and all their minds transfigured so together, more witness than fancy images, but yet still, strange and admirable. So please, Your Grace, the prologue is through us. Lack of approach. <coughs> We offend, it is with goodwill, that you think we come not to offend, but with goodwill to show our the scale is the true beginning of our end. The actors are at hand, by their show, you would know what you would like to know. Gentles, perchance you wonder at the show, but wonder on, till truth makes all things plain. This man is Pyramus, for you would know. This beauteous lady Disby is certain. This man with rough cast and lime doth the present wall, that by a wall did these lovers come to sunder. This man with lantern dog and bush of floor and presented moonshine, who moonshine did these lovers think the scorn. He <coughs> to meet at Nandis' tomb, there, there to woo. This grisly beast, which lion hight by name, did the trusty Disby come first by night? Rather scare away or did a fright. In the same inch of the dolphin fall that I once stopped by name presents a wall. In such a wall's end, how do you think that had an air cranny to hold and chink, through which the lovers Pyramus and Disby did whisper often very secretly? <laughs> oh, wall, full often has heard my moans for parting my fair Pyramus and me. My careless have kissed thy stones, thy stones with lime and hair net up in thee. I see a voice! Now, like the chink, to spy, I can hear by this beast's face. My love, thou art my little thing. But thou and these two meet me straight away. I will come without delay. <laughs> you ladies, you, whose gentle hearts do fear, the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on the floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here. For when lying rough in wildest rage doth roar, to know that as I snug the joiner, and my lion fell, nor lies down. For if I should come and strive into this place for pity on my life. <laughs> this land turned out the horn in present. This land turned out the horn in present. Myself the man it do seem to be. This is old and it's too, but where is my love? Let your epilogue alone. Sweet friends, to bed, a for night behold in the solemnity and nightly revels and the jollity. I'm so happy about how our play went. The audience seemed to love the play. Everything was going amazing until Hippolyta had to not enjoy playing. It made me so upset. After all, 
My acting skills were the best out of everyone, even flute. <laughs> it was such a tragic and amazing story, and I think that I, I mean, I mean we, really <laughs> captured the essence of it. They never even gave us a pension. <laughs> I personally think that those royals are just too unfit to admire our beautiful clay. <laughs> At least they could have given the pension to me. <laughs> If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear, and this week an idle theme, no more yielding, but a dream. Gentles do not reprehend, if you pardon, we will mend, and as I am an honest puck, if we have an earned luck, now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends year long, else the puck a liar call, so good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends.
so ordinary. We <laughs> and we go back to classes and all of that. But your parents are going to have fun tonight. How many of you are going to the benefit tonight? Ooh. Parents? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thanks again for coming. Um, Mr. Everkey, our resident photographer, is going to come forward and organize all the kids for a special photo. Um, you are also welcome to take one of those photos.